Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Sweeping new proposals aimed at extremists could actually damage free speech, critics say. Home Secretary Theresa May unveiled the extremist disruption orders at the Conservative Party conference and said they would be part of the next manifesto. We're talking about people who've not actually done anything, they just hold views or opinions which we regard as unacceptable. That is an enormous difference, isn't it? Well, it's not just about somebody holding views, it is about people who are showing those views, who are using those views, inciting others. Mrs May said she wants action to be taken against people who seek to spread, incite, promote or justify hatred against others on grounds such as religion, sexual orientation and transsexualism. However, former Shadow Home Secretary David Davis and former Attorney General Dominic Grieve have both spoken out against the plans. And The Guardian and Independent newspapers both criticised the proposals as dangerous and leaning too far in the direction of authoritarianism. The Christian Institute's director, Colin Hart, said the plans were unwise and unnecessary. This looks like a gagging order triggered by anything that breaches the tenets of the Equality Act. It's not hard to see how this could be used against Christians who believe in traditional marriage or ministers who preach that Christ is the only way to salvation. These plans are much worse than Section 5 of the Public Order Act. Alarmingly, they are even worse than Labour's religious hatred bill. There's no need for the Home Secretary to propose these plans. There are plenty of anti-extremist laws already on the statute book. Yes, we need to combat the Islamist threat, but this isn't the way to do it. You can't protect democracy by undermining the very foundations of democracy. David Cameron has again spoken of his unstinting support for same-sex marriage in an interview with the BBC. The Prime Minister was questioned by Newsnight's Evan Davis about the notion of two homosexual men kissing in public. OK, you're in a public park. Two men, mm -hmm. recently married, are kissing each other. Is that sweet or is that mildly inappropriate? No, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, fine. I, I believe, look, I've been very clear about this, and I, this is where I do, as it were, marry uh, traditional and modern values. I believe in the family, I believe in marriage, and I think it's such a great institution. Uh, I think men should be able to marry each other, and women should be able to marry each other. I, I've had and, some and kiss each other in public well, as well. well yeah, yes, yeah, so if yeah, I can no, kiss my you... wife in public, I don't see why you can't kiss your husband in public. The Prime Minister has previously vowed to export gay marriage around the world, and earlier this year called on other countries to follow Britain on homosexual rights. A recent survey of Conservative councillors found 60% disagreed with the Prime Minister's push for gay marriage. A man who was conceived by rape says he is so thankful that his mother resisted pressure to abort him. Gary Moore's grandparents told her quite plainly to abort him, but she refused and was told to leave the family home. She was just a teenager at the time. Gary explained what happened in a moving interview with the Christian Institute. I know for a fact that my mum used to look at me sometimes and could see in me the man who raped her because she mentioned it to me once. And I used to see the hurt in her face sometimes when she looked at me. Uh, looking back now, that only speaks to me about the incredible, um, about the incredible love that my mum um, showed me all, all that time because she could look at me, see somebody who had um, hurt her so badly and yet she still loved me for me. Gary's story is the latest in the Christian Institute's Choose Life series. You can find out more and watch other stories at christian.org.uk forward slash choose life. Stephen Fry's boast about illegal drug taking is sad, silly and reprehensible, a commentator has said in a stinging criticism. In his new memoirs, More Fool Me, Mr Fry brags about taking cocaine in Buckingham Palace and the Houses of Parliament. But commentator Livy Purvis has said there is something very wrong about the TV personality using his friendly harmlessness to boast about years of deliberate illegal activity. Writing for the Daily Telegraph, she said her dislike grew as she read the detailed accounts of his drug taking. Purvis also criticised his positive description of drug dealers. He has no awareness, it seems, that these cafe dealers are dependent on a hideous international trade. She commented that if the gatekeepers of fame took a sharper line with illegal drug users, people in the arts community would be helped. Purvis was not alone in her criticism. The Daily Mail's Christopher Stevens attacked Mr Fry for what he described as a love letter to a Class A drug. 
And finally, in an alarming move, a school library in California has banned all Christian material from its shelves. Staff at the library were told to take away all books with a Christian message, those authored by Christians or published by a Christian company. One such book is Corrie ten Boom's The Hiding Place, the true story of Christians in Nazi Germany who helped Jews escape the Holocaust. School superintendent Kathleen Hermsmeyer said, We do not purchase sectarian educational materials and do not allow sectarian materials on our state-authorized lending shelves. Religious advocacy group the Pacific Justice Institute warned, Some of the greatest literature of Western civilization comes from people of faith. Libraries cannot engage in an open purging of books simply because they are of a Christian perspective. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.